Bitwig, quite popular. Can it Volcadine? It's pretty straightforward. Let's get on with the optimal audio settings. Go into settings, audio. I'm on a Mac in this case. Otherwise, you want this to say ASIO. Make sure you have your interface selected as input and output device. Optimal sample rate is going to be 44 or 48 kilohertz. So pick one of those. I'm going to go with 44. And the buffer size should be somewhere between 128 and 512 samples. If your computer and interface can handle it, go with 128. By default, there's only a stereo setup for the inputs in Bitwig, so I'm going to add two mono inputs, one for each input on my sound card. I highly recommend using Vocodyne with a MIDI keyboard, so make sure you have your MIDI connection set up too. I have two channels prepared here, one MIDI channel and one audio channel. We're going to put Vocodyne as an insert effect on the audio channel, same channel as we record the vocals on. So let's find Vocodyne, Vocodina, Vocodine, and add it to the audio track. Once you get the interface up, I recommend watching the other general videos for the interface and pro usage. But a quick tip is you can resize the window down in the bottom corner. And if you do want to use it without a MIDI input, you can set your scale up here and activate the auto mode. Let's close it down for now and root some MIDI into it. Select the MIDI track. Go down to the output tab, select tracks and audio 2, which is our Vocodyne track. There's another tab called plugins, which you could mistake it for because Vocodyne is right there, but that's not the one. Click, ready to go. I'm just going to draw a MIDI clip in here because I only have one USB port available on my Mac right now. No MIDI keyboard. Next thing you want to do is arm both of the tracks so you can play and sing at the same time. And I want to make sure also that I have the correct audio input set up. In my case, I have the microphone in the left input channel, and then you just record something. <laughs> 